virgins and virgettes. <laughs> Boy, this guy. Ready for 15 minutes of this? Yeah. All right. Well, here we go. Dip the lights. Does he not? Does he not know how to? Yes, it's already a disaster. I expect no If you want to know how this video goes, I say, hey, all Scott here. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you said the corner. It ends with a blue screen coming down. It's 15 minutes. Don't spoil it! And 13 <laughs> seconds long. Aww. <laughs> How's everybody doing? Great! Woo! I'm standing. Nice. I want this to be clipping. I want this to be clipping. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, here we go. Hey, <laughs> These neighbors think they're so... Oh man, Scott's painting was amazing. Hey, Scott! Hey, Alright, everybody, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's mute in a little bit, alright? Alright, ready? We're gonna do a demo play, okay? Well, I want you to tell me if it's like good enough. Get that in. <laughs> Ready? Okay, we're gonna just backtrack a little bit. What's up, virgins and virgettes? Yeah! I just wanna watch the bed. <laughs> hey, all, Scott here. People don't get that anymore. If I'm in the word Scott, all oh, hey here. Just doesn't count kind of your modern word here. That line is going to change up the first four words I say, everybody, to be understandable to more people. Uh, here, I have a lot of options to shift through. My name is Scott. Welcome to Scottsburg. Everybody? No, just Scott. Hi, right, cool. I'm me. Hey, who are you? Hey, I'm going to go to Smith. I don't know. I like that one. You got to go to this time, you don't need a black room set. You got to pull the franchise on your hands. You got to start over again. That's the key to success, at least with Wookiee, you know. Reboots are a hot ticket item these days. They're constantly getting pumped out within the television and film industry. But these game reboots are what we're talking today. I mean, reboots are totally understandable from a business perspective. After a series has been around for a while and there's a big fat number at the end of the title, apparently, as it's turned out, Mario Party 10 will have to play 1 through 9 before that. I am really guilty of this mindset. If there's a game I'm interested in, but it's a sequel, most of the time I'll want to make sure I either play the previous games or at the very least have a good understanding of them. That's why we see so many new games from old franchises with no number, no new subtitle, just a series name. Easily the biggest trouble for video game movies. I mean, I've had that start with Modern Warfare 4. Nobody knows what the hell that is. Here's how it should be. I cannot wait to see the next couple of Modern Warfare. What if it's a game series of press stars or because the publishers worry people won't buy into a game called Doom 4? By taking a pre existing franchise and making a new entry that is newcomer friendly, ignores previous continuity, starts anew, and has a boring scoop of static to appeal to both potential new fans and long time fans alike, it's like a game developer's favorite pastime. Reboots just make sense. They can appeal to newcomer and veteran fans. 
However, there is susceptible to numerous problems. The uh, game won't make the franchise special in the first place, changing too much, ruining game player characters. You have to find the right balance between keeping what made the series beloved to begin with and killing more people. And I've read this event on for a while, especially with film. So it really isn't a new concept. However, I read these reboots and video games started to become more common in the Xbox, PS2, and the GameCube era, but it really started to become a thing the generation after that with the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and Wii. A lot of people were either just getting into gaming or getting back into gaming around that. So to rely heavily on previous titles wasn't going to cut it. The Sony continuity was too much to handle. Now, this is a good starting point. <laughs> the title and just label something as the title of the series so then more people would feel like they could pick it up they didn't need prior knowledge they could just start the series here which is everything a reboot strives to be sometimes you have reinventions of it in a more modern style like return to form or the best thing a reboot can ever strive to be gritty as gamers got older so did a lot of their taste so it was a hip thing to take an e-rated franchise and end it all up i always looked at Barman and said well that's not right where's the angst I just got back from Spencer's gift. I'm not even for this. <laughs> it's possibly the most definitive way to not reboot a series. I guess Hudson Soft wanted to take Bomberman Man and turn it into something that could rival years of war with its persistent goodness as brown and gray. This game knows how to use no colors, and they redesigned one of the most iconic characters in all of gaming and turned him into something your mom wouldn't approve of. I have Commando, so this technically is a sequel to the original Bionic Commando on NES. You might have played this and asked, what happens next? Obviously, this. Hey, this is just Bionic Commando. It came out 20 years after the original. The tone is way more icy. I think it's fair to call this a reboot. Well, I think it's just okay. Uh, the only thing I ever remember about this game is that it gave Nathan Spencer a white arm. What a twist. Your dead wife has been a part of your robotic arm throughout the entire adventure. That's something worthy of being on the back of the box. <laughs> DMC Devil 5, one of the most controversial reboots in all of video games. Not because it was necessarily bad or anything. It's alright, but it's DMC Devil May legacy just so poorly. Capcom enlisted Ninja Theory to develop the game rather than developing it themselves and forced them to make the game the way it is to help DMC reach bigger audiences. That meant turning the main character Dante into... <laughs> this is a fucking generic looking video game for talking about. A lot of these reboots like to take on the character a character design to replace them with these college dropouts. I guess for a more generic looking character, I can relate to him more. See, that was why I could never get into Devil May Cry. I just couldn't relate to Dante. He had white hair. DMC was okay, I just felt like it was rebooting the series for reasons that made no sense. Taking things that actually made the series unique and changing them because they thought those were the problems with the series. Turned out they weren't. Then Capcom released Devil May Cry 5, which ignored everything DMC did and was just a direct follow up to Devil May Cry 4. Now, instead of being considered a reboot, DMC is more so considered an alternate timeline version of Devil May Cry now. Mainly because it's hard to be a reboot to a series when the series just deboots back. Capcom was all about these reboots for a while. There was a Mega Man X reboot in the works that ended up being cancelled. Maverick Hunter. Think of something along the lines of Metroid Prime, how that took a 2D game and went first person with it. Maverick Hunter was pretty much going to be a first person Mega Man X game, but much darker and grim. So imagine if the Bomberman X Zero guys made a Mega Man X game. Honestly, I think this could have been okay. But I kinda doubt it, it was probably gonna be bad. I'm also thinking of this in terms of how well Metroid Prime turned out. Now it has to reboot that right. After a long hiatus, they took the Metroid series and threw it in a new dimension and perspective, all retaining what made Metroid Metroid. The development team of Maverick Hunter was made up of some people who worked on Prime. So I think this project had a bit more potential than some may say. That was probably a good thing it was cancelled. This is trying to take X and turn it into something like f***ing Master Chief. And I get why they were designed characters like this. To get rid of that cartoony kind of kitsy vibe and truly make a Mega Man game that you'd be proud to say you played last night at school. But a lot of the people who are only interested in the dark, gritty, mature games aren't really open to trying new things and thus they aren't guaranteed to give a piss about a gritty Mega Man X reboot. And just saying that out loud, what guy who only plays dark and gritty mature games would actively care about a Mega Man X reboot? On top of that, something like this is less likely to appeal to actual Mega Man X fans because it's so radically different from the original game. I think it's fair to say, while I think this game may have had some potential, it would have flopped hard commercially, I guarantee. How about a gritty reboot of a World War II shooter? If you want grit, you can always take a look at EA's Medal of Honor reboot in 2010. The original Medal of Honor games were pioneers of the modern first-person war shooters. Then EA asked, you know Call of Duty? Metal of Honor 2010 left and then spunk. It really gives you no reason to play it in comparison to something like Call of Duty. And if you get a sequel, Metal of Honor Warfighter, 
And it's something that can be used for almost any MPS. Of course, there are leaders that have no business existing. You know, who needed a completely new origin story? Fire out the dragon. The kids wouldn't understand any of this. He needs a Okay. Oh, really? <laughs> I swear. Yeah. Godboard PS4 is one of the most radical reboots out there. It's a hack and slash franchise with a fixed camera and mini game that defied all the odds. It was not that. This is a weird reboot the more I think about it. So, Kratos is still the main character, but Godboard PS4 switches from the Greek mythology of the original series to Norse mythology. But apparently, this is still the same Kratos. He just decided to change mythology on us. Uh, I mean, sure. The reboot, however, is much more of a cinematic story-focused adventure game compared to the original title. It's like most of the other first-party PlayStation games. While well, God of War PS4 still retains hack and slash elements, they're definitely toned down to make way for a much more character-driven story. And I can appreciate that, and I think the characters pop much more with this change of gameplay. It's just a feel so similar to a lot of the other games Sony Studios are making that I can't help but think the original style was more unique in comparison. But this felt much more like a game called God of War. Yeah, so whatever, I still like playing this morning, God of War 3. Wolfenstein has been through so many reboots now, I don't know which of these is real. Wolfenstein is the most influential series ever when it comes to first person shooters. Well, the first major reboot was Return to Castle Wolfenstein in 2001, followed up by Wolfenstein from 2009, and then adding things out with Wolfenstein in New Order in 2015. Return to Castle Wolfenstein was pretty great at the time, and Wolfenstein in New Order and the games that followed it are definitive modern Wolfenstein games, in my opinion. I think these are fantastic modern representations of the series. And something f***y happened in 2009. For my opinion of Medal of Honor 2010, I kind of stays true with Wolfenstein 2009. This is such a nothing game, there's nothing that fun or remarkable about it. The Nazis did do some crazy stuff with gravity, though. Biggest pet peeves with reboots? 
one of the titles. I mean, if maybe the ninth game in the Mortal Kombat series, Mortal Kombat, really got more people to buy it, okay. It's just one of the new games revealed in the title is revealed to be just the name of the series. I roll my eyes a bit. Now we have to start referring to these games by unofficial titles or calling the title with a year or the system stuff. Mortal Kombat 9, Doom 2016, God of War PS4, Tomb Raider 2013, Punch Out E. So those aren't the official titles, but that's just what we have to call them. And that's sort of annoying, especially when two games are completely different, yet have the same title. Saying, oh, I will pray. That could mean anything. The title of DMC Devil May Cry never made much sense to me marketing-wise. Like, DMC is kind of more of an abbreviation fan to use to talk about the Devil May Cry games, so just calling the game DMC doesn't make much sense if they were looking to have this appeal to more people. I feel like it would have done better if they just straight up called it Devil May Cry. I adore Tomb Raider 2013, but the title being full out Tomb Raider doesn't feel the most fitting to me. You do raise tombs in the game, but it's not the main focus. I think it would have made more sense to just call it Laura Croft or something, because it's focusing on her origin story, and one of the last things I think of with this game is honestly the Tomb Raider. Sonic the Hedgehog 2006. Uh, one thing I will never understand about this game is its name. They wanted this to be a fresh start for Sonic, so this is what Sonic was always meant to be. I don't get that because Sonic the Fix's gameplay is pretty similar to the Sonic Adventure titles. Uh, why were they acting like this was Sonic's rebirth and deserved to be called simply Sonic the Hedgehog? When it was pretty much just a third Sonic Adventure. Uh, plus, they re released the first game on Game Boy Advance the same day, and that was just called Sonic the Hedgehog. And that was bad too! And a lot of them have released two completely different bad games with the same name on the same day. The Punch Out games. Alright, how many times can you reuse the same title? Can you just call the Wii One Punch Out in the face? However, sometimes I do think it's fair to use the generic series as a title. When well, a series is gone for a long time, like the subtitle or number kind of makes sense. I mean, why we call Killer Instinct 2013 Killer Instinct 3? The most of the general population doesn't even know games called Killer Instinct 1 or 2 ever existed. We well, think it's going to be seen as cash grabs for renewing for long time fans. And it looks really handy that. But I think we still gotta look at some of these from more creative perspectives. It can be incredibly frustrating and complicated to be tied to continuity for years worth of content. Especially if current developers didn't work on previous titles in the franchise. The series can become worn out and beaten to death. But they still may have the sense the characters, the gameplay, the setting are all beloved and you want to create more things around them. But you don't want to be tied down to the limitations of what came before. Sometimes it's okay to let go of the past and the two characters or settings or even completely change them while still retaining the heart of the original source material. And that's how some of the greatest stories and characters of all time evolve. A story told hundreds of years ago changes over time depending on who's telling it. While well, reboots are kind of given a bad rep most of the time, I think a lot of it has to do with the terms reboot and revival being used to death these days. Very annoying to hear. I'd recommend using the terms reimagining or a new take when describing these types of installments. I think those terms have a lot less of a corporate we're bringing back old Sheila because we don't have any original new ideas ourselves feel to them. Reboots can be promoted sometimes, but I think they can be totally understandable and necessary. You can't make 20 installments of a game series called Need for Speed without like five reboots. You just can't. <laughs> Categories. I'm not going to say what they are because then you're just going to ask questions. I'm going to base what question you ask on like if you win this award or not. So uh, yeah. So why don't we just ask some questions and uh, hopefully the first question will immediately uh, win an award. Yeah. So uh, let's see. All right, the guy. All right. I can't see what game. Action Girls Racing on the Wii. Hell yeah. Come up here. Come up here. Come here. Come here. Smack it down. Thank you. You can sit now. Alright. Alright. Alright, shout out the Colossus gag. Wait! Okay. In your intro, do you say all or y'all? Because that was all. Yeah. And the first winner of the <laughs> Well, my friend, you win the award, let me find 
mind it here. Everybody, please let's have a standing ovation for the winner of the Leave Now Award. <laughs> Specific, but um, in one of the most recent Scott the Waz episodes, uh, from reveal to release, the ending gag for that episode was you standing in front of a Burger King yelling, I ate here! <laughs> and you have to ask, and this is a question that other people wanted me to ask too, did you actually eat there? <laughs> Next to each other. Congratulations. Alright, uh, let's see. We're gonna go the back there. Fucking game. I can't see any back. Uh, who's holding up that thing? The guy holding up that thing? Um, alright, so we're gonna have a poster. A poster in the back. Yeah, you just, you just shifted to the side. Yeah, you're doing that. Yeah, you. 
Get up, get up here. Get up here. I can't hear you. Keep coming. Huh? You're coming up right here. For everybody to see.
There's no favorite. Right, so they're all the worst. <laughs> oh man, um, let me see. Just Dance 2. Just Dance 2. So, uh, I remember in one episode, you specifically mentioned you were having difficulties controlling a first person shooter on your Mac. Um, yes, because it's on a Mac. <laughs> No, okay, here's here's the thing with that. I was mainly I was mainly talking about how how I found it stupid that they remain retain that control scheme on the Mac when no Mac comes with like two dual like uh clickers, a right and a left click. So I was just like, this is kinda dumb. Um, so like you would have to buy a third party mouse just to play that game, like without getting arthritis. So I was just like, that's why. I'm not stupid, okay? But thank you. Um, did you win any? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. The Vita. Hey. Oh, hey. I was hey. What color is your toothbrush? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I usually. Oh. Uh, no. no. <laughs> uh, you. Uh, hmm. I usually swap out toothbrushes all the time, man. I'm very picky. I'm just like, all right, we're going with this toothbrush, and then a week later, it goes on the floor, I'm like, damn. And I go out and buy a new toothbrush. Uh, me and my toothbrushes have like a very short-term relationship. So, um, all right, uh, let's see, let's see, let's see, let's see. The Pikachu. Hi, I've seen you. Yeah. Uh, no. Come on up here. Come on up. Congratulations, you are the winner of the most insulting question. <laughs> Alright, uh, how about Rowler right there? That's his name? I, I can't yes, Pokemon. Yes. <laughs> Have you ever made a video about the pros and cons of live services? You know games like Anthem, Fallout 76, that kind of stuff? <laughs> uh, maybe. I mean, I don't know. I've never, I've never really thought of it, but that is definitely something I could do. I hate revealing what I'm doing in the future, though. So you know. But I'm probably. I, I, I haven't thought about that, but that's a good idea. Thanks. So what, what's your name? Thomas. Thomas. All right. I'll, I'll credit you in the description. I'll be like, Thomas. <laughs> Great job. Did. Thank you. Uh, let's go all the way in the back. Who's holding up an entire chair? <laughs> Put it down. Put it down. That might be a, that might be a safety hazard. <laughs> Come up here. Put your shoe on. <laughs> I see if there's any you're not wearing shoes over. True. Do you need right. my portable charger out? You're in the clear so far. All right. It's in my. What do you got here, partner? How many copies of Chibi Robo Zipline can you eat in one minute? Can I eat in one minute? And without the peel. With and without the peel? Well, just because you said peel, you win an award because you win the most letter E's in a question. <laughs> Kazooie in a backpack? Yeah. Yeah, alright. Come on. What's the cringiest thing that's happened at this con? And is this it right now? <laughs> um, you know what? It hasn't been that bad. Okay. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't smell as bad as I wanted it to. <laughs> this, this, is, this is composite. It smelled a little sweaty today. Uh, so I was just like, man, somebody. Somebody is sweat and pooped over here. <laughs> uh, Barlow. Yeah. Is he sweating and pooping? <laughs> All right. Uh, Mario and Sonic at the uh, Sochi. Is that so? Is that it? Yeah. Okay. I, I'm so sorry. I forgot what where that one that took place. <laughs> Um, probably not. <laughs> I, I, I like the idea of one day making a video about Fire Emblem. About oh, it, yeah. And just be like, Yo, what is this? <laughs> what 
I'm like, playing. I don't understand any of this. Yeah, they're good games, but I'm just, I, I, don't, I don't know anything about it. I don't know what, I don't know what that, what it is. I, I, I refer to them as dicks. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, well, we're gonna go ahead and move on to the next one. Uh, the Yingling, Yingling plushie. Did you ever get unbanned from Tinder? A uh, Tinder? I thought you were gonna say Pornhub when I uploaded <laughs> I upload a video me eating cereal to that? <laughs> they took it down. <laughs> I, I, I uploaded it, and then they took it down. I got an email from them afterwards. And then they were like, this doesn't, this doesn't fit our terms. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what are you talking about? <laughs> well, I, I ever get a man from Tinder? I don't know, man. I deleted Tinder years ago. So, I mean, I could have been. Let's go. What was that? Tinder 2 video. Let's go. Yeah! yeah. You can't hate playing Fling Smash. <laughs> <laughs> you just can't. Um, now, I usually get into little bits where I'm like, all right, I'll play like four games in a week, and then I won't touch a game for like a month. But, you know, I mean, the kind of videos I do, I, I don't always have to play games because it's literally like, you know, sometimes they're reviews and sometimes they're just talking about general topics. Uh, I love playing games, but you know, sometimes I'm just like, mm, I don't really feel like playing anything right now. So I do feel like that sometimes, but you know, I still I still really like playing games. Uh, I think the last game I played for fun though, like for fun, that I didn't really have any intention on making a video on or anything was Spider-Man PS4. That's, that's a good game. That's a good game. Um, let's see. Uh, Master Sword. All right, be real with you, man. Minecraft or Fortnite? <laughs> There is, uh, <laughs> the thing with that is, uh, you can easily, like, you can easily look that up, what's statistically better, and because of that, you, my friend, win the award for www.yahooanswers.com. <laughs> <laughs> Smart foods? Yeah. Nice. All right. <laughs> yeah. How does scoliosis affect your life? How does, how does scoliosis affect my life? See, funny story about that. <laughs> so I don't have scoliosis. The only, the only major problem I have is color blindness. Uh, so you, you're, you're all just like, I don't know, you're all just purple. <laughs> so, uh, no. Uh, I used to make jokes about scoliosis, and one dude in the comment section was like, shut up. Uh, one of my friends, Joe, who's in a lot of the videos, he was uh, Larry Tesler in The Internet and You. Uh, and he's done a lot of other stuff. Um, uh, he has scoliosis, and he's just like, no, this is funny. <laughs> so I switched over to osteoporosis. <laughs> Apparently it's a horse disease, but nobody's made any, nobody said anything about it, so it clear. All right. Um, Here's the problem with SNES games, is I can't really see the label because they're so small. What was that? It's Donkey Kong Country 2. Oh. Nice. <laughs> Go on. What do you got? I would say, I mean, Anything Donkey Kong Country, Country 2 related? Uh, <laughs> all right. Uh, I love Storm Day. Yes. Well, it's curious if he inspired you in any way. Cause yes, he's, I love he's, Storm Day. Yeah, Storm Day only has like 9,000 subscribers, and he's only had 9,000 subscribers for like the eternity of YouTube. And it really stinks because he makes some amazing stuff. So if you really like, go watch like his back catalog because a lot of his stuff he references a lot of his old stuff and his new stuff. So it's just like you really you have to you have to be a true fan to appreciate the video. But I would very much recommend checking out Storm Day Productions on YouTube. He makes wonderful stuff. Um, all right, the, 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 the blue N64. Who would you like to collab with? Who would I like to collab with? Uh, 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 I mean, that'd be pretty fun. Uh, 
not know. I usually let collabs just kind of happen. Um, it's really weird because like collabs on YouTube have like a specific format where it's just like you're talking in your space and then it cuts immediately to the guy talking in his space. And then, you know, like I've never done like a long collab on my channel outside of that. Most of the collabs I've done are just like random little stupid cameos. Like Andy Jacob is some sleazy salesman or something. Or Ant Dude is running a styrofoam factory. <laughs> But um, yeah, I, I really want to find a way to do, actually, I have something in the works that is like a pretty interesting version of a collab. That's, yeah, I don't know. But that, who knows, I don't, I don't know. Anyways, you with the notebook. Hey, what's your favorite disease? <laughs> My favorite disease? Used to be scoliosis, that ain't gonna happen. Uh, let's see. That would have been a good Yahoo Answers candidate right there. Uh, let's see. Let's see right here. No, you didn't get it. Dude, we're, we're doing the down. We only have like five. One, two, three, four, five. Yeah, I can count. <laughs> Their disease, I don't know. Lupus is pretty funny. <laughs> yeah, uh, what else? I like saying the word hernia. <laughs> Scoliosis, osteoporosis, lupus, and hernia. There you go. Everyone is here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, you. You know what you did. to ask me the question of what Mad in a way its release date is, and it's really truly simple. I know it exactly. <laughs> it's, it's clear as day. Everybody knows what Mad in a way its release date is. It's easy, it's understandable. It was August 14th, 2007. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, uh, you guys, has, I think that's Enter the Gungeon on PS4. Um, what's your favorite pre-smartphone mobile game? Pretty smartphone mobile game. Do iPod click wheel games count? Yeah. Play Sonic the Hedgehog in my iPod yeah. Nano. Yeah. Stomp. <laughs> Only had one button. <laughs> I mean, that's all you need for Sonic, but you had a click wheel to control it with. It was terrible. But that was my favorite. Um, let's see. Uh, Madanoid on the Wii. You back there? What do you got? Yeah. Well, I mean, I'm not thinking about it right now. 
it's just, I, I just don't really think about it. You see, it's really weird because like, it was, it's been a really fun time at this convention. I've really had a good time like actually seeing everybody and meeting everybody and talking to all, all the fans. I don't even like to call you fans, I, you know, just people who watch my videos. But uh, it, it's been really cool. Uh, and I feel like I'm way better with that here than like, I'll go to like the grocery store sometimes, be buying bread, and like somebody will come up to me and like, are you Scott? And I'm like, I wasn't expecting that, I was just buying bread. <laughs> I, go, I get called up there and I'm like, oh, hi. And like, and I'm like, I'm just like, I'm going to the grocery store, I'm like, I'm gonna buy bread today. I'm not, not planning to talk to anybody, I'm just gonna buy bread. And that just happens. So I'm not thinking about this right now. It's probably very overwhelming. I'm just thinking about, I don't know, I don't know its release date being August 14th. <laughs> Do it off the top of my head. Uh, but yeah, it's, it's pretty amazing. I'm very, it's absolutely incredible. And I don't like to think about it because I know I'm gonna faint. So, thank you. Uh, the box Sega Genesis. Yeah, what kind of bread was that? <laughs> right. I'll talk about this for the rest of the panel, dude. I like friends. It's like, so I usually do whole wheat, sometimes honey wheat if I'm feeling a little risky. Uh, and then there's like this, there's this like, uh, there's what like a brown bread bread? called like brown berry or something or something. And they have like health nut bread that just says, just crammed with nuts, dude. Just crammed with health nuts. I'm like, it's really good. So those are my three breads. Thank you. All right, uh, who's like a tall guy? Let me see, who's a tall guy? I'm short! Who's, who's the tallest guy in the room? I'm not tall. So I'm All right, short. all the short people sit down. Come on! Not tall enough. All right, you're right there. What would you sacrifice to get more WiiWare games? See, okay, here's the thing. You're the tallest man in the convention, so that, that's why you win the award oh. for the longest. <laughs> Saving the world against Dick Vitale's awesome baby collar shoes. For 150, that's not worth going that wild. It's probably going to be like a standard, like a, a very large scale Christmas special. It's going to go back to the Christmas special format of like the episode 50, which was a very mad like Christmas. So it's going to be a Christmas special this year. We're going to know what it's going to be. Halloween special is going to be crazy this year. Things go well. So you're going to get two pretty big, big guys. Uh, Astro Bears Party. Stand up. You know what you did. Oh. <laughs> um, Scott. Yes. Do you go on V? What? What was that? <laughs> okay, that's not. That's fine. Okay. <laughs> I, have another, I have another question. Yeah. So if it wasn't that question, then I'll answer it. <laughs> <laughs> it's that no eight thing, but I noticed that you have two copies of Rhythm Heaven Fever. Yes. And I also have two copies of Star Fox Guard. <laughs> and I have more copies that I haven't shown on film. I went to Five Below, dude, and I bought their stocks of Star Fox Zero. I was just like, I can't, I can't pass up that deal. <laughs> Five dollar Star Fox Zero. I mean, every copy of Mitch. Yeah, oh, dude, Mitch is great. Especially when you want to get copies on Blu-ray. I think that was better. All right, um, any stock phone controller. Can you upload a video of you 100% in Chibi Robo Zip Flash on your channel? No. <laughs> uh, Alright, uh, Nintendogs. Yeah, you. Okay, alright. Yeah. What's your favorite ending gag you've ever done? My favorite ending gag? I need to, I need to think about this. Let me think. Oh, I, I, I bought soap. That was... <laughs> I bought soap at the end of Black Friday. 
That, that's about as good as it's gonna get for me. That's all I'm talking about from there. Uh, the hospital one was pretty good. Yeah. Um, uh, oh yeah! No, from Game Foods, I love that. Is that a pinball machine? Oh my god, my ass is bleeding. <laughs> There's a lot of them. I'll probably, I probably forgot like a good few of them that I really liked, but those are two that I really, really liked. Um, all right. I don't know. What is that? The box. You with the box. Yeah, you. Okay. All right. I couldn't see it from back there. Most generic question ever. Other than Madden 08, what's your favorite game? I'm burped. I'm sorry. One sec. <laughs> favorite game Super Mario Galaxy. You sit back down. Okay. <laughs> And the uh, crash, the crash beanie. Have you seen my dad? <laughs> uh, I'll say no to that. All right, you see, nobody laughed at that, so that's why you win the award for witness to a joke that didn't land well. <laughs> there you are, my friend. Come on, come on. <laughs> Uh, all right, all right, all right, all right. Let's see. Uh, what's that? That's a new play control game, isn't it? Is that Pikmin? Yeah. Dude, I can see Pikmin new play control from a mile away. <laughs> like, I'm driving at night, I'm just like... There it is! <laughs> what do you got? San Andreas? That's my joke answer. Uh, okay, who do I predict or who do I want? Oh, Crash would work. I think Crash would work very well just because, like, I don't know, like he's an icon of gaming. I think that would work. Um, I, my, my most wanted character is always Chibi Robo. And then Nintendo killed Chibi Robo. So. But I'd say I'd say Chibi Robo. CJ from San Andreas. <laughs> uh, let's see, let's see. You, you got a fishing net, dude. Oh, you got Wii Play, too! Oh, you're the villager! I didn't see your shirt! Come up here! Come up here! You're all the way back there! I don't have glasses, dude! I just spit on this microphone stand! What do you got? How many copies of Wii Play do you currently have? 30. <laughs> <laughs> 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 30. 
All right, what do you got for us? All right, so in one of your videos, I'm not sure which one, you said that there was going to be a fans at the E328 convention on this very weekend. You're here, bro! <laughs> <laughs> We're all fans of E3 2018, right? It was way better than this year. Yeah. <laughs> Pretty cool. Yeah. Axe. Yeah, you. Our chips dinner. Our chips dinner? And hey, what kind of chips are we talking here? You gotta be specific. Uh, what's your chip? Uh, tortilla chips. Tortilla chips? Okay. <laughs> I mean, sure. Why not? Uh, let's see, let's see, let's see. Let's go, let's go a little wild. We gotta go, uh, the slime. Giant slime. Yeah, you. What's the best thing you've got at the convention so far? Best thing I got at the convention? Dude, I got a Game Boy in box, and I also got pilot wings for the Super Famicom. And I was just like, this is worthless, but it's pilot wings in Japan. It's way better than pilot wings in English. <laughs> Why not? All right. <laughs> the, uh, the, treasure, the treasure chest sort of thing? Yeah. I have to ask you, and I think I'm asking on behalf of everyone here, how many games is too many games for you? Like five. <laughs> All right, water bottle. Oh, nice. Yeah, <laughs> pretty nice. Everybody likes water, right? Right. <laughs> Great team. So, so you've had a lot of balance in your life, right? How much time a week do you dedicate to YouTube? How many weeks? Do what? How, how, many, <laughs> how many hours in a week do you dedicate to YouTube? I don't count out my hours, man. I don't know. I got enough. Uh, I usually, so I usually get a lot of work done ahead of time. I usually get like notes and stuff. Uh, done ahead of time, or I'm like, all right, you know, like making a video about game stores. I'm gonna make a lot of jokes about that or something. I leave it in a word document, and then like the week of, usually Wednesday, is when I go like, all right, let's hone in on this. Let's get let's get this started, and you know that's usually so. It's usually like five days a week. It's usually dedicated to it. Monday, Tuesday, my usual break days. All right, let's do let's do three more questions, okay? I know I said five more about 20 questions ago. Well, let's do this, okay? Let's finish this for good. All right, somebody's holding like a hat back here. Yeah, you. All right, him too. <laughs> All right, we can do you and the other guy with the hat. All right, yeah. Uh, so first off, uh, this isn't a question, but I wanted to say, it, I'm also colorblind, so it's cool that there's a colorblind YouTuber. It's fun, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. People yeah. always ask us, yeah. hey, what color is this? And you gotta give that look where it's like, Colorblindness is more like, I don't know, you just have problems seeing dirt. You, you have problems like specifically saying what specific shade of color that is. You know, like something's red and I'm like, is it though? <laughs> like, I can look at this for like 10 minutes and somebody says, no dude, it's green. And I'm like, oh. it might be, you're right. What's the price? I don't know, like black. Maybe white. Maybe green. Maybe red. I don't know. It could be anything. It's just a little. What was that? You want the fries? I'm not gonna eat them, but sure. <laughs> <laughs> you played a game called One Shot on Steam. No, I have not. You should look into it. I have a Mac, dude. It's on Mac. <laughs> I don't play games on a Mac. <laughs> <laughs> I just don't play a lot of PC games, but I'll definitely, uh, I'll definitely look it up after this. Thank you. All right, two more. Okay, the other dude with the hat. Where is my arm is dying? He was, he was hanging out with the hat. Yeah, 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 you, you. Right? Yeah, you. What do you got for me? All right. Have you ever considered doing a video on like developers who aren't really seen as much as like Tosang? They made like Splatoon 2, Starfeast, Super Princess Peach. Yeah, I think that would be a fun video to do. That'd be super interesting. Um, yeah, more obscure developers, developers that don't see in the limelight that much. That's pretty cool. Yeah, I definitely might consider that. Thank you, dude. All right. The, the Waluigi Racket. Okay, so my four digits is your social security number. <laughs> uh, let Zero six. Let's, let's keep this between you and me, okay? <laughs> Everybody else plug your ears, okay? <laughs> All right, ready? I'm up here. Stop. Because you were the final uh, question of the panel, you win the Lifetime Achievement Award for waiting so long. <laughs> so, this is what it came to. You guys 
She didn't go to the Crush 40 concert. <laughs> Watch some guy talking about reboots for about 15 minutes and then insulting you to your face for about 20 minutes. Uh, I want to thank everybody. Thank you all for watching my videos and for showing up. It's been an honor entertaining anybody for any period of my time. Uh, I really do appreciate it. I know I don't talk a lot on social media or I don't stay at all. But I really appreciate it. See, I was waiting for that. That was going to be the ha 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 award. But uh, thank you all very much for my any of your Imagine support. holding your phone. And nobody noticed. Hey Scott, I've been holding this phone for about an hour. Can I ask a question? I've been holding this phone for about an hour recording this thing. Yeah, of course. So I was gonna ask, uh, what did you have for lunch today? I didn't have lunch today. That's the worst part. I had breakfast. I went to Bob Evans. Oh, That's nice. About it. All right, thank you.